we get into introducing the full LocoBot product line, we have to give a shout out to some of our friends who helped inspire us to create the next version of the TurtleBot, which is the LocoBot line. Yeah, so uh, Carnegie Mellon University, in tandem with Facebook, uh, approached us with their design for the LocoBot V1. And the LocoBot is, is essentially a low-cost robot uh, used in education and research. Uh, they had already been using our manipulator that you see here, um, and they had asked that we uh, kind of productize their platform uh, to make it more universally accepted, essentially. Yeah, so well, they'd, have, they'd basically done what TurtleBot did, uh, is they threw up a BOM of open source hardware. Um, they just wanted somebody to take it to the finish line, so we stepped in to help them out. All right, so this is our entire line. There are four different models of varying sizes and cost points and arms. And I'm gonna let Rick introduce them. Yep. Uh, so here at the right side, we have the base model. Uh, this is the LocoBot base. It does not come with an end effector, um, but this will get you started uh, with the SLAM, the autonomous navigation, the mapping, all that good stuff. Um, the next model we have here, uh, similar to the TurtleBot 2i, we have a four degree manipulator. Um, this is a roughly 50 gram payload capacity platform. Um, so this is for very basic object manipulation, pick and place, uh, very light objects. Uh, the next that we have in the series is featuring the Widow X 200, and that is a uh, five degree freedom arm. Um, you can see it's far larger, um, but again, uh, pick and place, object tracking, manipulation, things of that nature. Um, it has a payload capacity of roughly 250 grams. And last but not least, uh, we have the six degree of freedom uh, Widow X 250 manipulator. Again, it's gonna be around that 250 gram payload capacity, uh, but in uh, reach and, and that six degree of freedom, it, it just offers users uh, a different way to manipulate. Again, same vision, object tracking, pick and place, things of that nature. Yeah, that six degree of freedom um, actually gives you just so much more manipulation capability. You yeah. can see it right here. Absolutely. Just me moving it around a little bit. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out is that we have cradles for the arms, mm -hmm. which is nice because in shipping, these are in place, they come tied down. And then if you need to ship your robot around, um, you can always tie them down. And then when you put them into a resting position, they're cradled and you can turn them off. And when the robot's running around, they stay in place. So this one actually has a cradle. This one actually cradles metal to metal back here on the bar itself, which is neat. And then, Rick, the LiDARs are optional on all the robots, right? Yeah, the LiDAR, if you need it, um, it's got this nice little hat that's built in, uh, but that is not necessary. The platform is built. Uh, you know, you can get the base model without the LiDAR, save the cost, uh, but again, get you the introductory yeah. to mapping and navigation. You know, and another fun part about this is that it is all modular, so you could start with the base model with no arm, uh, get used to doing slam and navigation, and then pick the arm that you'd like to add on later. You could jump past the pincher and go up to a larger okay. arm if you want. Like I said, you can add the LiDARs, um, and so you can build your way up if your budget doesn't let you yep. start with, you know, the Cadillac. The other thing to mention is it's two robots in one. Absolutely, and, and I think that's one of the most important features about this, um, you know, especially if you are considering uh, the TurtleBot platform. So the six degree of freedom version uh, right here, this is actually two robots. Um, so if you were to separate this from the base of the robot uh, and the, the microcontroller that controls the arm with our ROS packages um, and a power supply is all you need to have a fully functioning uh, manipulation desktop arm, as well as keep the original base of the robot to do that mapping and navigation. Right. And you can even have a separate 3D camera that you could set up with the arm, have a whole different vision mm -hmm. kit, and you could have two different teams operating on two different projects at Absolutely. that point if you wanted to separate them apart. What's neat is if you pull the arm off, this whole base comes off with it, and you literally just drop a weight right on it, and it'll hold it down. Um, you can even borrow the power supply if you want to, and you don't even have to have a wall wart. Um, although for longer projects, you'd want one. But that's a nice feature as well uh, on the product line. So we covered a lot of the hardware changes um, as it pertains to the LocoBot line. Uh, I've got Luke here, our lead ROS engineer, and uh, we're gonna kind of discuss uh, a little bit uh, the type of packages and the different way we've kind of structured things uh, with this new line. Right, so the LocoBot uses our new IR-ROS 
um, architecture, basically a way to abstract away these low level softwares like drivers, wrappers, and even some ROS code. Um, it allows you to get started right out of the, right out of the box using uh, Python or C++. Um, you know, get immediately working with manipulation, slam, perception, those kinds of high level robotics concepts, rather than worrying about like counting encoder revolutions or something. Okay, so this is a way for you know researchers and educators to get to basically the meat and potatoes of what they're trying to do way quicker than traditionally. Exactly. So another great feature of IR ROS and our new architecture is that installation is as easy as four steps. You just have to download the script, make the script executable, and then run the script. Okay, so this is going to get people you know, onto their project a lot faster than the traditional setup of a more open source TurtleBot 2 style robot. Exactly. The script will run all of the commands for you, even install ROS, uh, the April tags uh, perception pipeline, and the real sense perception pipeline. Okay. Um, you, know, you mentioned the April tag. Can you just kind of explain to you know, our users here what, what is that and why is it good? Why are we using it? Right. April tags are a uh, fiducial marker that are used in uh, computer vision systems. Uh, basically, it is a way to represent a pose or a transformation uh, from the camera frame. So using the April tag software package, you can put an April tag on uh, some manipulation goal object or even a location. And from the camera, uh, it runs its algorithms and it can uh, give you the transform between the camera and that April tag, marking that location for you. Okay, so how and where would we use these uh, April tags in our particular case? Right, so you can use them in probably like one of three different ways. Uh, the first being uh, calibration. So if you see on our arms here, we have April tags. And with this camera, we can look down at the April tag and see exactly where the arm is in space. Normally, you can just use the URDF and know where your end effector is. Uh, but with these April tags, it gives you a little bit extra security in knowing where your end effector is. Um, the second being manipulation. So say you have an object with an April tag on it, you will know exactly where uh, that object is, uh, more so than just doing uh, point cloud processing or uh, like image recognition uh, kind of stuff. And then the third way of using it is in um, denoting uh, landmarks in your environment. So with this uh, Locobot specifically, uh, we actually just came out with a landmark navigation package for it, um, and you can do both slam and uh, perception and find these tags in your environment and then go explore or then go navigate to them uh, once you're done mapping out your environment. So I kind of want to circle back around. Um, what does the general uh, ROS package support look like for the two different platforms? Right, so on your TurtleBot 2i, um, it's a bit older and we don't really support the software on it anymore. We'll do uh, major uh, bug fixes and security fixes if those are necessary, but it mostly just runs on uh, Kinetic and Ubuntu 16.04, both of which have been end of life at this point. Um, whereas Locobot, uh, we run uh, Kinetic, Melodic, and Noetic, eventually ROS2 uh, once we get around to that. Um, and we are continuously creating new packages, new demos, and new examples for it. So the local bots are just going to be the more maintained and updated version essentially going forward? Exactly. Being the next generation of products, uh, we're going to make next generation packages for it. Awesome. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new today. We'll have links in the description below to any of the kits or hardware that you saw in the video. Remember, anytime any of that's purchased, it helps us as a company keep producing free content. Um, please feel free to comment in the comments below on things that you're interested in or questions you might have or any ideas about future videos that you'd want to see us get into. We're always interested in seeing how we can help the community keep innovating. Thanks again for watching.